testimony in the congregation. See the same and if I be lifted up from here, I will draw all men unto me. Praise God for whom all his blessings flow.
Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify you for this day. Lord, we ask that you bless all those that are hurting and bereaved today. Lord, comfort them as they go through and let them know that you made no mistake, that your word is true, and that you are still the Lord of all. So, Heavenly Father, we ask that you just bless and just keep them right now. Lord, anyone that's calling on your name, we ask that you just lift their spirits, touch their bodies right now, heal right now, Lord. Lord, whatever they need of, we just ask that you do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just glorify, we magnify you this day because you are the Lord of all. You are God above God. You are the King of kings. And Lord, we recognize and we acknowledge you today. Lord, we just thank you for being you. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for how you're moving. Lord, we just thank you for how you're changing situations around. So Lord, we just glorify. We thank you for who you are and for being matchless in your doing, Lord. Nobody can do it like you because you are wondrous God. So Lord, we just ask that you just continue to bless this house and this part of Zion. Bless the pastor. Bless those that have come and have come in your name. Lord, we lift up every church that's had the door open in your name right now. Lord, just meet them where they need. Meet them in, in this hour right now. Give them what they need right now to hold on and to hold out until the coming of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just bless your holy name. And Lord, we ask that you just be blessed in everything that's said, everything that's done in your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now we have our announcements. Our brother Russell Burke, followed by welcome to this by Brother Najee Moore. Sybil Belton, in support of the crowning 
in support of crowning the queen. She will have a New Year's Day breakfast right after the watch night service here at the church. More details will be posted downstairs. First Lady Simmons and her cabinet would like to say thank you to all the women of the Simeon and Merry Christmas to you and yours. Also, congratulations for our final total of donations that were matched by investors saving advance donated to American Cancer Society. The donation was $10,830. The Junior Mission has some items left over, hats and gloves. If you know of a needy family with children, we can use them. They will be downstairs in the time of the United States as this service. And that will conclude today's announcements. Thank you. to our temporary partners, may we felt so proud of this.
church nurses. And we will present this to you.
devotions will start for our watch night service, and at 9 30, the pulpit will take over. Amen. And we will move forth through the night. Uh, Reverend Rodney Nguyen, uh, Bishop Spates, Reverend Leonard McNeil, and myself and our counselors will be preaching that night. And uh, Reverend Michael Emmanuel will open up for us as the first sermon. And we're looking forward to a glorious time that the four churches come together to share on that night. Each pastor will be bringing his choir and they will sing before they preach. And I'm asking uh, the combined choirs of Abyssinia to sing before I preach. Amen. So if you sing in a choir, all of y'all will be singing together that night. Amen. And I know the choir stand won't hold all of you, so I just might have all of you sitting here in the first 20 rows. Amen. Amen. They sing that night. All right. All right. We're, We're looking forward to a glorious time. We're on vacation. I Bible school to study, and we will resume after the new year. Amen. The oh, Lord has been blessing our Bible study. We look forward to his continuous blessings. Uh, Brother Stephen, how many churches did we have left after you gave out the ones you gave out? You gave away five, but there were about five left. You gave away two. So there should be ten more in there? Okay. So I have about ten churches for a person who is going to cook a turkey and serve people for Christmas. Amen. Amen. And I, and I say that because these churches were actually given to me to give to families that needed them for Christmas. Amen. So if you do, please stop by the little shed next to the handicap ramp, and Deacon Stevens will be glad to give you a turkey. You cannot take one for a friend. Amen. Tell your friends to come to church, and we will be glad to accommodate them as well. Amen. I want to thank, thank all of you for your prayers and words, words and comfort and encouragement uh, that, that I received, received and also the that the family of a late Pastor John T. T. Uh, we were in the Minnesota's Conference uh, on Monday, was a week ago, and uh, he had just preached the, the uh, devotional message. Went to, went to his seat as he usually do and sat down and he said, he said to the preacher sitting next to him, how do I look? The preacher said, you look fine. He said, well, I don't feel fine. And at that time, the right side of my body had become numb. And they rushed him to the hospital and they, you know, a few things happened between that day and Friday morning when he passed away and went home to be with the Lord. His, his weight was going from Friday night at Great Friendship Baptist Church, and um, the funeral was this Saturday morning at 8 o'clock at Zion Hill Baptist Church on the corner of Osborne Terrace and Hawthorne. And so I'm asking that you would pray for, excuse me, that you would pray for the family, that the Lord will uh, continue to bless them and strengthen them in, in times like these. Today is their day to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Tomorrow it might be your day. Amen. So let us let us let us keep each other prayed up and in prayer that the Lord will bless us and keep us. Happy to have our friends, our brothers, and our sisters from the Lodge and from the Order. And our own sister Davis is where the matron. Amen. And they come and worship with us. They're in grand and where the matron. Amen. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Amen. There is a difference. Amen. Amen. And thank you for pointing that out. And we're happy uh, to have a stand up there so they can, they can see you. Y'all know Mary. Amen. And uh, Mary Hills and Bangles, Georgia. She, she said, Ken, the pastor sent me. Amen. So, so I'm in, I, I know some important people. And we're just happy to have all of you out, brother, in the back. Amen. Some solid rock. And, and uh, you are the grand, grand master. Amen. 
got some grand and some potentates and everything with us today. And we're just so happy to have you all come and worship with us. Because you could have gone to any of y'all's churches. And y'all chose to come and share with us today. And for that, we are eternally grateful. God bless you. Again, I'm asking your prayers for my sister-in-law, uh, my wife's sister, who is uh, very ill at this time. And I'm asking that you remember her. Her name is Dorisa. So when you go around in prayer, please call her name. Amen. Pray for your pastor. He's leaving tomorrow. And um, going to see my mama. And uh, look, looking forward to it. Church, 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 amen. amen. And now we're going to have our altar prayer. I'm going to have our own chairman of our deacon board. You can hear our way. Anyone that's going to come to the altar at this time, you may come. Visitors, you're welcome to come.
Well, God, we don't know what 2015 holds for us, but we do know who holds it here, and that is you. We're holding it in the palm of your hand. The Lord, lead and guide us safe and true. And we're praying later, oh Lord God, we don't want you to forget those who are sick and afflicted on the bed right now. Father, we know that you are able to raise up them. So touch them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this Friday night of past, now there was a program held at St. St. Benedict College, I mean High School, and it was to recognize the families who had lost loved ones to violence in the city of Newark. Later that evening at 8 o'clock, the West African community came together jointly with Ancinium and other churches and mosques to have a prayer vigil for the city of Newark. And it was from 8 o'clock to midnight. And I want to thank Deacon James Kemp, Deacon Lee Shingles and Minister Shingles for coming over and spending some time with us that night in prayer. I left at 20 minutes to 12, and they were still shouting when I left. And um, it was a great time to be together praying and singing to the glory of God. And I not only want you to pray for Newark, but pray for our cities everywhere. When two policemen are sitting in their car to protect the citizens of that community can be gunned down by assassins as if it doesn't mean anything. We need to pray. God told us something. He says, if my people call out by my name, Humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. He said, I'll give them heaven, and I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. Brothers and sisters, that's a mandate for the church. We need to pray that God will heal the land. Amen. To pray for our city and our leaders and continue to pray for each other to each holiday season. We want to mention also that Brother Bobby Williams was at the prayer vigil on Friday night. And if you wasn't there, you missed, you missed it. it. Hope, you'll you'll hope you'll be there next time. But we've got to continue to keep praying for our city and our young people. We keep trying to tell them. They keep being pulled away from them. We're going to keep praying, praying, praying to ask God to deliver them. So let's pray for one another. And now, after two selections, we're going to make a court. The next one you hear will be none other than our own pastor, the Reverend Dr. Perry Simmons, Jr.
And the angel says unto them, Fear not, for the Lord will bring you good tidings, great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this is the Lord of Christ. 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 And this is the Lord Praise, Praise God, God, God and say, say Go Glory to God, God and thank Christ. Jesus. And on and earth, earth is his good will to all men. And it came, it came to pass, and, and the angels, angels were going away from, from, from them into heaven, to heaven the shepherds, shepherds said, said one, one to another, another that was not going to be even under Bethlehem, and see this thing which has just come to pass, for which the Lord has made me known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and they bathed it, lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made no more sins, which was what told them concerning this child. And all they that they heard it and wondered at those things which was what told them not to be shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, turned, glorified, and, and praised praise God, God for all the things they had heard and seen, seen as, as it was, was told unto them. them. That, that is, is the word, word of, of the Lord. I want to take, take you on a different journey, journey today. today. And, I and I want to preach from the subject who we leave out. out of the, of the nativity scene. Who, who we leave out of the, of the nativity scene. Will you give me time, time to work this today? Amen. Amen. For most, most people, Christmas, Christmas is, is a wonderful time of the year. year. Uh -huh. Christmas celebrates as we think, we think about, about God sending his son, son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ into, into the world, world to die for our sins. sins. It's, it's a time, time for family of gatherings and knowledge and initial meals. It's a time for trees and temples and lights and, 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 and Christmas tunes. It's, it's a time for giving and receiving your gifts. It's, it's a time, time when we all stop and, and reflect on the reason why we have this season, season in the first place. place. It's, it's a time, time for thanksgiving and, and appreciation. And, and also appreciate the people in our lives who are the most precious to us. To us. But for the others, I feel like the first Christmas is a time, time of loneliness and, and sorrow. As they deal with the heartbreak of missing of those who are who no longer with them. For others, where Christmas is painful because they lack the resources to give to the people they love the things they want them to have. For many, it's a time of overly indulging and rich who go with spending on the gifts, overcoming the problems associated with the season and attempting to overcompensate for the failure of the past years. Christmas is a time of celebration for the church. church. It doesn't it matter, matter that, that Jesus was probably born on some time of year. year. It doesn't it matter, matter that we saw some spring wind and went for all. What matters is that, that God loved the world so much that, that he sent his precious son to the world that, that sinners might be saved from their sins, from the wrath of God, God and from and the fires of hell. Around the church. We celebrate by singing singers Christmas hymns, pre-teachers Christmas sermons, teachers Christmas Sunday school and lessons, and have had Christmas plays. I don't know about you, but I love the Christmas plays we've been having here at our church. But they are the official of it, but you know, you know, some of them, you know, you know. Right out of the wrong way of production. And what and I love about the first Christmas plays in the church is that, that the plays themselves actually were the preachers of the gospel. 
the Lord's people who attend him. And I'm determined to hear about Jesus Christ and why he came into the world. And in the same sense that I was also attend to be reminded of the great love and grace of God that defined him the Savior. But my favorite part of this Christmas play is in the Tennessee scene. You know the part where Mary and Joseph come out and play the baby to Jesus in the manger. That there's a star overhead and Joseph and there's a star overhead and you're reminded of the humble surroundings of my Savior in the the shepherds of the angels appear, the wise men make an appearance, and small children dressed as sheep, and jumpers and cows are there as well. And they did this as simple as they did, reminds us of a profound truth. It reminds us that, 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 that at Christmas we celebrate the incarnation. We, we celebrate the moment when God became flesh and walked among men. We celebrate the love and grace of God who willingly laid aside his heavenly glory to be born in the humblest of circumstances so that lost people like you and me could be saved. Everything they please. In the nativity scene, every person represented in the nativity scene glorifies the same Savior. When we see the nativity scene, we don't go smile. At that point, we accept that the simplicity of it. When we find human in the costumes and in the monitors of the children or the antics of the children, then you see children just wiggling and moving. They just can't see things as easy. Yet, yeah, yeah, when you see the tendency thing, I hope it touches something deeper, deeper within, within your, your heart. heart. I, I, I understand that as a constant reminder that, that God, God loves, loves us. us. And, and that he came to this world to die for us. And he paid the unthinkable price to provide a glorious salvation for all who receive him. And you and know, know what? That's, that's what was wrong with the Nativity scene. That there's nothing wrong with how the high house looks, looks, or with the costumes that the kids, kids wear, wear, or, or, or with the messages we, we proclaim on stage in the Nativity scene. The problem with the Nativity scene is that we were missing from it. Think about it. Everyone we should show the nativity scene is someone who is portrayed as a worshiper of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First of all, it says that the angels worshiped him. They were saying that go back to God and all our lives and all the things he will toward all of all men. We also notice that the shepherds were worshiping him. But as the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things he had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Even the wise men me worship God. Uh -huh. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him. So all of those were worshippers. The animals were there in their own way. Were there in that scene worshipping God. God. So, so, so you see the people involved in the tentative scene, and that's about as far as our minds go. We come away with, with the impression that, that Jesus died for people who loved him. Now, all, everybody that was in the electricity scene were people who came to worship him. And so it would appear that Jesus was the king for those who worship him. That's, that's a long way from the, from the whole story. That there were a lot of people involved in the Christmas, Christmas story who don't show up in the, in the, in the, the kissing scene. 
Yeah, they, yeah, they, they are the God pieces of his Christmas show. And what we need to remember at Christmas and throughout the year is that Jesus Christ did not come to this world for the people who loved him because of God love him naturally. He came to give his life for those who hated him and wanted him dead. Huh? Uh, they that are home, the Bible says, need no position. But they that are sick, they, they need a position. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, what I'd like to do in this, in this message this morning is to look at the activity of the from a completely different angle. In other words, you know, I, I, I just want to mess it up. The, 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 the way you see things, I, I want to mess it up this morning. morning. I want to put some truth in the nature of this thing that you would never, never think about, 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 about in any in, 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 in our state age of reenactment. Just to get back to that. You're at the end of the year on Sunday morning, and the day of the year is here. I, 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 I want to put some folk in there that you would know the narrative is here. I want to preach to you about who we need to love. The day of the year is here. So let me let show you a, 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 a group we need now of the day of the year is here. Why, why we need these people out of it? They did it to see year after year. God did not leave them out of his love and his grace. First, first, one one he done by the intimacy scene of the ignorant. Say the ignorant. The first is the first person we will consider is the scenes of Augustus. Luke 2 1 and 6 says, The scenes of Augustus order a taxing thing in his kingdom. Caesar Augustus was the nephew of Julius Caesar and his successor. He chose the name of Augustus as a tribute to his greatness, even among the Augustus, his name that after him. Augustus ordered his people to be taxed. This simply means that he was taking a census. He wanted to know how many people were in his kingdom. He probably did this in preparation for living a tax on the people that all of us are raised red, red, and new. See, so Augustus saw himself as a God. If the Roman citizen was required to offer a pinch of incense upon a burning altar and, and worship him once a year. And what Augustus did not know was that, that the one true and living God was using this pro-Hitman Roman to accomplish his sovereign will. But what Augustus didn't know was that God was using him, the ruler of the most powerful empire in the world, to accomplish God's sovereign will and to fulfill an ancient prophecy. We have no way of knowing the human race for, for Augustus' time or time for, for the sense that he called. But what we do know, however, is that God was behind the time. Uh, look what the Bible says in Galatians 44. But when the time was full of that, in other words, in the fullness of time, God sent forth this son, made of a woman, born of the law, to redeem him that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of the son. In other words, back in the garden, I mean, God promised Adam and Eve that he would send the Savior to the world. God worked through, through the course of human history until the perfect time came. When his son was to be born. And guess what? God sent Jesus when many human conditions lined up perfectly. Watch this. When God sent his son to the world, the ancient world benefited, or rather, the ancient world benefited from several conditions that made it far easier to spread the good news of the gospel. First of all, you had to go to the Roman law. And so, and so what the mama law did was well, it, it took that part of the mama law down to the John Shaw because they got him in hand. They tried to oppress Paul one time, they put him in jail, he appealed to him on Rome, and they let him out. Second, they went on Rome in peace. During this whole time, guess what? That there was peace in Rome. There was no war between 
Roman 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 Roman
Now, number four, I'm not a self righteous. When you look at the nativity scene, you don't, you don't see self righteous there. And by, and by using the label of self righteous, self -righteous, self -righteous, self -righteous I'm, referring I'm referring to the religious leaders, leaders in, in that, that day, day who were blind to who Jesus really was. Amen. They were so blind to the truth that they, 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 they failed to see. It did they saw so it out there with them. I'm not. The real God is the hell who circumcised Jesus at eight days old. They don't know who he was. 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 Huh? Huh? Some of them got help. Huh? Huh? When, when the wise men arrived in Jerusalem, following a star, they said was leading them to where they could find the king of the Jews. You never call the religious to lead you. And he cried out by where he was, he was going, going, to going to be born. Yeah. That's right, right. folks. Where, where is he? I want to come and worship, worship him. Right. Huh? Huh? They pulled the mic back to him too and said that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. He's being born. Hey, 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 hey,
priest in the king of the he spent 46 years. And the whole sum of money turned into a Jewish temple into a place for the Jews. He said, now, in order to go along with y'all Jews, I'm going to give y'all some money. So y'all can be in the church. So y'all can go to the temple. And I think my preachers and my pastors are going to be careful. From, from whom we receive money, money. 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 the faith but this initiative. King Kevin was not only a wicked man, he was a cruel man. Yeah. He had five yeah. yeah. and yeah. some yeah. sons yeah. put in there. Because he said that after his power. Can you imagine that? Man, 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 because he loved the And when it became clear when the doctor told him, you're gonna die, you know what he did? He wrote a decree that whenever he died, 70 Jewish religions or religious people would be put to death. So folk would more fear and then everybody else they feel their home and heal. Yeah, now that word. It's the field of clothing. With, with seven sensitive, cruel cool people, people today. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't even know that Jesus, Jesus died, died to save, save them. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he came to this world, world to live and, and to die. die. So that yeah. the wicked could be, could be delivered from their evil. Yeah. Yeah. And you're yeah. a witness? Yes, he died for, for people like Gabriel, the soldier that, that carried out his order. He died for the abortionists. He died for serial killers. He died for murderers. Jesus died for the drug He died for the drug He died for the homosexual. He died for the lesbian. He died for the thieves. He died for the ruthless people who do everything in their power to hold on to everything they possess. He died for people who will step on in to get what they want. He died for those who don't care about the feelings and needs of others. He died for the mean, hateful people who rub shoulders with him and they did. He died for the wicked, sinful people. Do as they please with no thought of anybody else. I tell you, Jesus, he died. For people like Adam and who walk into the school in Connecticut and brutally kill 20 uh, first graders and six of like, don't teach them. He died. For the members of, of the West Rural Mountains Church who protested at the funeral uh, of Karen, who were protesting at the funeral, Karen signed and said, God can't take that and thank God for their soldiers. He died for them. That they, they, they are as cruel as those who, who take the lives of others. But Jesus died for them too. He died for those who can make a joke out of their senses. He died for politicians. He, he died for bankers and stockbrokers. He died for teachers and homemakers and truck drivers. He died for pastors and teachers and Sunday school teachers. He, he died for sinners. That includes every person that is in here today. Jesus died for you and you. Can you get a The Bible says in Mark 2 45. For even the sons of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life for ransom for men. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I declare unto you, first of all, that which I also have received, how did Christ die according to the Scripture? How he was led according to the Scripture? And how he rose on the third day according to to the scripture. For the Bible says, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. And he said, for scarcely 
with a righteous man. Ah, yes, we avenge a good man who will die for that man. And he said, Why are people yet sinners? Christ died for us. Will you in this here? Our world is still with the head people. Therefore, it's filled with wicked people. But the Bible says in Romans 3 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm so glad that Jesus came into the world to die for the wicked. And then, one Friday morning, they led you to the family's heel. They stretched his right. They hung him he died just for you and me. He died for your sins in my back. They buried him in the wild grave. He stayed there all Friday night, all day Saturday night, and all Saturday night. I'm 